Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards, and in this video, I want to discuss 2024 Top Series 1 and give you my product review. So baseball season, baseball card season is here and it's a great time to discuss Top Series 1. We've seen some product already kind of released at retail in particular. We've seen a few hobby boxes be opened, but the actual full-fledged release is coming up this week. And I want to tell you whether or not this is a good product to open, whether or not this is a fun product, if there's value there, and kind of give you an idea what to look for when opening this set. So I want to look at things like rookies, parallels, autographs, things you can expect, new things in this set and more. So let's jump into this. Let's talk about the design. The design is very good they did a very good job with this design and it's one of the first times that I've actually been excited about the parallels recently in like recent tops they've really done a bad job with borders and making them look good with parallels like the Independence Day this is the 2024 series one Independence Day in 2019 and 2018 they looked fantastic in 2020 they were okay in 2021 2022 2023 they were not good they were just stars but now we have a full flag I like that I've seen some of the parallels like the camo which we'll look at in a moment Moment. I like that. So the design is good. I really like the neon lights. I like the borders. I think they did a good job with really everything. This will also look good in Chrome. Uh, here is the base card. You can see it's a white to black gradient and some people will not like that, but I do. You'll make these very hard to grade because black has a lot of tendency to chip and have issues on those borders. But overall, I think they look great. You'll see this first card designation. This was a mock-up that the tops released, but the actual cards I've seen from LA de la Cruz so far, that is not there. So just a heads up. But overall, the design, I think it looks really Really nice. I think they did a really good job and probably one of the better designs they've had since like 2018, in my opinion. Next up are the rookies. This rookie class is pretty good and let's discuss what it is. So it's a very high risk, high reward rookie class. The reason I say that is because we have players like Ellie De La Cruz and Jason Dominguez actually highlighting this set. Evan Carter's also a top rookie. Basically everybody here, plus a few others I didn't include the photos of, are good rookies to collect. These are who people are going to be targeting. Colton Cowers is another high risk, high reward type player. And what I mean by that, there's a chance that they're going to be really great players to so the duration of their career and have major value, or they might fizzle out. But the good news is with this rookie set, it's not like past sets where when you open the product, there's just not potential, right? They might have one rookie. I remember when Wander Franco was a rookie in 2022. I know he did not turn out well for other various reasons, but in 2022, it was Wander or nothing. And that is not what this set's like at all. There still is that Wander type ceiling, at least 2022 Wander, hopefully not the current Wander, with someone like Ellie De La Cruz or Evan Carter. Carter has a great strike zone eye. We have Jason Dominguez, who's a Yankee, who looked great before having to need, uh, you know, UCL repaired with Tommy John and so forth. So you want to pay attention to these names. I actually included a list right here with the teams. I also did a rookie video where you can check that out at the end of this video to look at who is the best rookie to target with this set. But overall, rookies, deep checklist. Other key rookies that are not in this set, like Junior Caminero or Noel Di Marte, they have autographs and silver pack rookies, but they do not actually have base rookies in this set they have just insert rookies autographs memorabilia silver packs the parallels let's discuss the parallels here is all the different variations that i was able to find a couple new parallels and inserts so right here this is not on the checklist i don't believe but this is the team color match so what they did is they actually matched the color of the team and they put the logo on the border some people were upset the logo was included i think it looks pretty cool personally especially as a rockies fan if there's like a nolan jones it says future stars on the top with a really cool border with the rockies logo that'd be cool if it was purple you know that'd, that'd be a cool card to me but some people just wanted the color that's it but either way that is here those are basically short prints at this point they are not serial numbered but they're very hard to find they say case hit a lot of things are case hit that actually aren't but these seem like actual tough pulls then we have the independence day right here here is the memorial day camo I think they did a good job with the camo. They've done snow camo in the past. They've done the digitalized camo in the past. This is a traditional camo, which I think is interesting. Here's the gold foil. Here's what this looks like in that gold parallel. Here is the new Easter parallels right here. It's actually with bunnies. This is flowers. So let's actually talk about the new parallels. We have all the Easter ones like I discussed. In 2023 Tops update, we had Halloween parallels, and I loved that because I love Halloween. The Easter parallels are more gimmicky to me, but at the same time, I can't pick and choose which parallel holidays I like. Just know that these are essentially going to be in blaster boxes only and that's great to make blaster boxes more exciting for kids i i have no issues with that i think that it can be a good thing for people to pull cards out of packs even if they don't have major value i've always been a proponent of discussing how i don't like a large number of parallels and we are increasing that this year with the introduction of yellow and every hanger box those used to be exclusives to walgreens but now they're in every hanger box as well as the yellow crackle which are also in hanger boxes there's actually a 
purple Myers exclusive where it's actually a pack with one card included, but that's not included here because it's not like across the nation. So these are the ones you really can expect. You'll notice that advanced stats is not present on this checklist. Those are numbered to 300. They looked and felt exactly the same, but on the back it was advanced metrics like barrel rate and war and different things like that. But we still do have other cards like vintage stock, which are the same image, just a different feel to the stock of the card. So really the yellow crackle and the yellow parallel along with these Easter parallels are the new versions we're getting added to this year's product and alongside the team color match cards right here. Overall, they look great. I think they did a great job with the parallels as well. I have no complaints about this really at all, aside from too many parallels, but that's not this type of video. And one other thing I want to note is with the clear that's actually not mentioned because that's a hobby box exclusive. Those clear used to be only for about a hundred cards on the checklist. This year, every single player, 350 players, they actually have a clear parallel. So you have a chance of getting a clear of any player you would like out of hobby boxes. This made it significantly easier to pull a clear. I believe last year it was like one in every 3000 packs. This year it's like one in 800 packs for hobby boxes. And that's because every player has it, not just a limited checklist. So that is something different this year as well. One thing I do want to know is the total numbered cards outside of gold. So excluding the 2024 golds, that's what it's numbered to. I want to discuss the increase and then decrease of how many numbered parallels these players have. You'll see Albert Pujols had zero outside of the gold. Verlander had 54. That was the black. Kershaw had the black and the silk numbered to 50. Trout had the gold and the hope diamond. Mookie had a couple different things for 220. And we see it basically the same through Ronald Acuna Jr. at 376. We saw a jump with Jordan for 679. Big jump for Wander at 1678. Massive jump for Corbin Carroll at 3477. And we're seeing it drop this year to 3286. So there's 3,286 different numbered cards of Ellie De La Cruz flagship rookie card. And that is not including the advanced stats, just in case that was an error on the checklist. If so, add 300 to this. But either way, it's going down. And I view that as a good thing, even if the number of parallels is increasing. They're keeping this the same, but definitely a lot higher than where it was a few years back. And that may hurt value in the long run. Just be careful when opening the product. If you pull a, you know, one, one of those parallels, like one of those different shimmers that's numbered like 700, that's not as exciting as it used to be. Okay, short prints. Tops did a really good job with short prints this year. Like I am honestly impressed and I love what they did. So the very first thing you'll see are the golden mirror short prints over here with Alex Verdugo. It is gonna be the same numbered card. Actually, you can see with Jake Fraley too. Here's Jake Fraley's base card. This is the gold parallel. I couldn't find a base. This is the golden mirror. Same with Verdugo and you'll see they took the SSP off the back and just made the back gold. So that way it's obvious it is a unique special card. But the one thing that is new this year is gonna be the true photo cards over here. And what they did is this is actually the card. This is an Anthony Rizzo card. Here is the base card. This is a rainbow foil. Here is the true photo of Anthony Rizzo. They completely remove all the designs, all the words, and just leave the tops logo. Here's a Jose Ramirez, and here's a Josh Lowe. Overall, I love it. I think these are really cool. I may be in the minority, but I think these are going to be very collectible because it focuses on the image, especially for top rookies. I think that is really, really cool. And I think that these together, every player has one of these and one of these. I think it just makes this set more fun to open with higher potential for pulling something decent. Inserts. Inserts are always kind of weak, if I'm being transparent with you. They did do a couple things well. You'll see that the uh, home field advantage cards, they look so much better. They look so much better than they did the first few years. I thought they were cool back then, but I think they're great now. I think they look really awesome. The issue is that they're just a little bit too printed to have a ton of value. But overall, these are the best inserts in this product. You have the heavy lumber. These are basically limited to 500, but they aren't as good looking and they haven't really caught on yet. They do go for a decent amount, so maybe I'm wrong, but I do prefer the home field advantage. Heavy lumber is also sought after. We also have different uh, new inserts like this superstar blueprint, the grand gamers. This one is going to be the tops all team. And no, nope, this one's the tops all team. And this one's going to be the greatest hits. So inserts have never really been the name of the game for tops on these, but overall that is where we're at. I hope they have more like the hidden gems, but I don't think they do, unfortunately, because I don't see on the checklist, but maybe they do. Autographs. Autographs are never a big thing either for this product. You're looking for rookies and image variations and things like that in this product and less so autographs and inserts, which is different than most products, you can get great autographs. Like here's an example of an Evan Carter. And the reason I say that is because you usually will get some of these. These are gonna be the uh, baseball stars autographs. They're all stickers. All of the insert autographs aside from the reverence are going to be stickers. Uh, but you can see these are the 1989 tops autographs of Evan Carter and Andrew Jones, as well as the reverence patch autographs. Those are what you're looking for, but just be ready to get some of these. You can get some really great patch autos, but just know that they are going to have stickers on them instead of on card outside of a different few sets. So autographs aren't exactly what you're chasing. And then silver packs. These are included in hobby boxes as well as jumbo boxes. You get one per hobby, two per jumbo. They're great this year. The reason I 
I say that is because they still have autographs, they're still stickers, but you have great parallels like this Evan Carter Gold, and you also have Junior Caminero and Novi Marte in these silver packs, which is so random because they are not in Series 1. They will be in Series 2, which makes me think they will also have uh, silver pack rookies in Series 2 and silver pack rookies in Tops Update, so just take that with a grain of salt. So maybe these are a buy now and then sell a few months into the season before Series 2 comes out type target, but either way, these players do have rookie cards in this set, which is, I think, at least fun to have players we like and know in that product to make it a little bit better. Print runs are down. So this is actually Tops Production Baseball right here on Twitter. I was gonna do a print run video, but I decided just to use what he had. We're usually really close anyways. And so you can see there's about 900,000 of each base card. And here are the different number of cards per every single player for different parallels. Last year, we were at 1.256 million. So we're down quite a bit year over year. And I think that actually makes sense with the demand for baseball cards dropping a little bit. So that does make me happy. We're seeing print runs drop down to actually match demand instead of just printing and printing and printing that'll make these a little bit better and not quite as overprinted final grade the design i'm giving it today i like the design I think they did a great job thought out of the box and i think that it turned out well i think they'll look great for tops chrome print runs a minus it's still really high so i could give this like a b honestly but i gave it an a minus because it went down what like 300,000 each. So I'm going to give that an A minus, even though that could be easily be a B or a C because it's still high, but I like what they did. Rookie checklist, I gave it a B plus just because not all rookies were included. And it is not like there's one definitive guy who's a guaranteed going to be a stud type player. A lot of them could be, so this could be a low grade, but I think a B plus is good for the potential it has, but also for the fact it has a pretty low floor as well. Parallels B plus. This one actually, I'm going to change it to an A. I think I gave it a B plus, not because the design doesn't look good, but because there's so many of them is why I gave it a B plus, but I'll just say it's a B plus for that purpose or for actual pure design and aesthetics. I'm going to give it an A there. Image variations, A, great job. I think they nailed it personally. I love the true photos and I love the golden mirror. Silver packs, A, I have no beef with the silver packs. I think they did a great job there as well. Inserts, D, unless they have like the hidden gems or really rare SSPs that are going to make this product better, I give it a D. Autograph, C plus. There's not really much you're chasing outside of the reverence autos, which you're probably not going to get. You're going to get a baseball stars crappy autograph on nine times out of 10 or 99 times out of 100. You're not gonna do great on autographs, but an overall grade of B plus. I think Tops did a great job with this series one, much better than years past. And I think there's a lot of potential. So will you make your money back home to this product? No, you, you won't. You probably won't, but this is a fun factor type set where you have the opportunity to get back in the swing of baseball, you know, get some really great baseball cards. But I do think this product will be cheaper later in the summer as other baseball products release is what we've usually seen at the national. But either way, if you're gonna open this, let me know what you pull. If you get anything cool. And other than that, I will see you in the next video. Yeah.